This is the real deal here. ECN2 film developed and scanned the way it was supposed to. You're gonna love this. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about ECN2 film. There's a lot of you buying ECN2 film across the web from a bunch of different retailers and you're really enjoying the results you get. But I'm gonna one up you. I was graciously offered ECN2 rolls from Midwest Film Co. in Wichita. And they not only offered me the film that was already rolled for me, but they offered to process and scan it as well. And I'm telling you, I'm hooked with their process. They developed the film using the specific ECN2 required chemicals for what it was designed for. And then once developed, then they'd scan the film on a proper cinema scanner. I don't wanna spoil the rest of the video, but I'm just gonna tell you the result that you get via the true ECM process with the proper scanning is incredible images. You get amazing colors, you get incredible dynamic range, and the highlight performance is just amazing. I highly recommend you check this out because once you get your hands on this and shoot some of it, it's gonna be hard for you to shoot basically anything else. If you wanna buy some, there's an affiliate link down below that you can use to buy directly from Midwest Film Co. Before we get into that, let's check out some quick footage of me at a BMX event where I captured some amazing images using Vision 3 film and scanned and developed by Midwest Film Co. I got money, money changed. I got girls, things strange. Not to mention, I don't do the tension. When I'm in here, I don't know guess this when I pull up to the palace. Smoking every room, yeah, we smoking on the chalice. Red cup and we okay. Red cup and we located in the back room where they do things. Everybody know we okay, got the crew lit. All of these hundreds of millions, not one of these women's is smitten. All of the money, the feeling, they know that they're gonna get it in a minute. But if they can't really cool out, cool out, it's so head chilling. Yeah, I feel young. <laughs> Start something fun late after dark. Swimming in the water, girl, and there's a lot of sharks. Jump into my boat, yeah. I help you stay afloat. Yeah, I ain't had a smoke yet. No, I'm not a joke. Roll up to your body, yeah. You know I'm always loaded. So this is Justin, the brains behind the cinema film processing and scanning operations. We've really been working on focusing on getting our ECN2 stills lab up. Uh, so that you can shoot motion picture film in your stills camera. Now this is, there's a lab in uh, Germany that's doing it, um, and we're, we're using the same model, uh, uh, processing in ECN2 chemicals, and then scanning on our motion picture scanner. So today we're just gonna walk through kind of the steps that we take to get your images to you. The coolest thing about Midwest Film Co. is their cinema film scanner. This is very different from the Noritsu or Frontier scanners that most still film gets scanned on nowadays. Let's hear what Justin has to say about it. Um, we have just purchased a Blackmagic Sintel scanner. Um, so we wanted to dive in because there's absolutely nothing online about these scanners. The only things that are online about it uh, came out when it was originally released and no one really talks about the technical side of it, which we're not gonna dive a ton into today, but no one really shows how to load it, how it works, what it does, and we wanna dive in that today and show you all about it. All right, this is the Blackmagic Sintel. Uh, Blackmagic has made it very, very easy uh, for you to just plug this thing in. I went out and bought this like uh, workbench for a few hundred bucks and threw the scanner on there, plugged it in with a Thunderbolt 2 cable, and I was able to see it immediately in DaVinci Resolve. Uh, to my knowledge, there's no other scanner on the market that allows you to just plug it into your MacBook Pro and go. On the scanner itself, there's some console controls, and you have load, which is what we're getting ready to do. You have reverse, you have step back a frame, you have stop, play, step forward, and fast forward. So it's a lot like a tape deck, if you're old enough to remember those. So for now, we need to load the film so that it creates the proper amount of tension against the reels. To think that we can throw this up on a $30,000 scanner at real time and get beautiful looking scans from it from film is like a dream come true for me. I've been trying to scan my own film for, you know, nearly a decade. So seeing this image for the first time and running this thing for the first time as easy as it is, um, I'm sold. You know me, I like to process and scan all my film at home and I use my digital camera to get some great scans. But this, this is next level. 
scanning Vision 3 film on a cinema film scanner, you can't really get better than that. Now that that's out of the way, let's dive into the ECN2 process. Because 35mm steels film is typically about 5 feet long, you cannot process these rolls in the large machines used to process 400 foot rolls of Vision 3. These 36 exposure lengths are all done by hand, but using real ECN2 chemistry. We have these extenders essentially that allow us to put a bunch of these reels on the Jobo at one time. Uh, so we can get a lot more done in one order uh, or one run. Before we continue, let's talk about our sponsor for this video, Squarespace. So I actually just got up and running with my Squarespace site and it was quite painless. There's a couple of things I really like. First off are the blogging features. I really love how quick and easy it is to set up a blog and include photos, videos, links, all of the above. And I think every photographer should set up a blog so they can discuss their images post them in high res, and just have a way to connect with their potential audience. I also really love the galleries on posts. You can basically upload a bunch of photos in sequence and have them pop up next to each other in a specific way. And you can click through and look at them. It's a really good technique for storytelling, especially with your images. Instead of just posting them one by one, you can put them together in a gallery so that they all have a common theme and interest. Lastly, I'm quite excited about the online stores. I haven't set this up yet, but I'm going to, and my hope here is to sell my prints. All photographers love selling prints, and this is a really cool way to do so in a very personalized, direct way. So make sure to head to Squarespace for a free trial. And if you use my link, squarespace.com slash ribsy, you get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Processing ECN2 and C41 are actually conceptually pretty similar. There is one key difference, though, and that is the REMJET. This is the pre-bath, which just uh, essentially softens anti-halation backing known as rimjet. Um, I believe rimjet comes from actually using jets to get it off, which we're, we're not doing that here. So we're gonna soften it, then we're gonna wash as much of it off as we can. And then as we finish the entire process, we will um, actually use peg pad and some final rinse and get the rest of it off at the end. After the rimjet is softened and removed, then you proceed with the rest of the ECN2 process. Really basic stuff here with a couple washes and a couple baths. I feel like the demand for ECN2 is only going to rise when you have portrait at 18 or 20 bucks, whatever it is. I don't shoot a lot of uh, C41 because I have a ton of ECN2. Um, and we're selling it for $12 a cartridge right now. So, I mean, if you go buy film from us, it's $6 cheaper than Portra. Um, and you can send it back through the lab and have it processed correctly and scanned correctly. In my opinion, it should be scanned on a motion picture scanner. Images looking good. Um, we basically look for color a lot of the time, you know, you're just looking for the base color. This is 5219, so I know what that base color looks like. Um, it's kind of, we, we set it up against our control strips that we use um, that just kind of make sure that we're in control of the whole process and that your negatives are going to come back the way that you would expect them to come back every single time. Um, that's the biggest thing about a lab is consistency. I'm going to go run this underwater. This is the ECN2 final rinse. It's essentially uh, photo flow, really. I don't like to get my reels in the final rinse, so I just kind of take the film off of there, do one roll at a time. This is a, a little bit of a tedious process, and one of the reasons why people don't like dealing with uh, ECN2, because it has rimjet, and rimjet can be a pain. Um, so, some 4th of July action going on. Um, so you notice I've got a peck pad, which this is, uh, this peck pads are made to handle negatives. They will not scratch your negatives. Um, and our first step here is just to kind of grab the residual rim jet and make sure that by the time we're done and you'll be able to see, like you can see this has got a little bit of rim jet on it, that black. You notice that there's just like ever so slightly, there's just a little bit of rim jet left on there. And we wanna make sure that all of that's off because we do not want it drying on our film. And this is essentially what the jets would be doing in a linear lab. Um, that's what we're doing right here. We just do it at the end because you can't take it out into the light until you know, you're done with the stop bath at least. So this will be my last, we're all clean. And so those negatives are super, super clean. Um, like I said before, the base looks really nice. The base color looks like 5219. Um, and these are ready to hang and dry. I mentioned earlier that 36 exposures length are way too short for the large linear lab process. That goes for scanning as well. However, Midwest Film Co. preps the 36 exposure lens in a way that allows them to be scanned on a cinema film scanner. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're just gonna splice uh, these rolls onto our master roll. Um, 
all of the film that you see on here right now in this roll is um, all hours at the lab. Um, if I process your film, I'm gonna sleeve it and send it back to you. I don't cut it, um, I just sleeve it um, as one long roll and I send it back to you. There's twin check 171 and then 170. So why use a cinema film scanner? Well, the answer is easy. We're using cinema film. The key value proposition is that cinema film scanners are made to capture as much dynamic range from film as possible. When they scan, they give you a log format scan. All this means is that the scan is very low contrast and desaturated. You can then manipulate the look of the scan however you please. The rest of this process right here, the scanning process is gonna be done in Resolve, so this may look familiar to you. Um, this is the head, the first frame. You'll notice that it's a four perf scanner, so you're gonna get four perfs at a time. So here's the right half of the image, and there's the left half of the image. So after we get this process done, scanned, and exported as a TIFF, we will uh, use some stitching software to stitch the two images together. In order to dive in a bit more into the log scans, let's go ahead and check out some of my images. All right, so here we have the log scan. This is a normal file, just like any other scan file, except uh, the scan profile is log. So you've got minimal contrast, minimal saturation, and maximum dynamic range. So let's go ahead and edit this. This is, this is very simple. First thing you wanna do is actually add contrast. So we're gonna go to our tone curve here and we're gonna add strong contrast. That right off the bat makes a big difference in the image. Um, we can edit this later, but this is a nice starting point. What I wanna do now is actually increase the exposure because um, the image looks a little bit dark to me. So I think about there, half a stop of extra light makes a difference. Now I want to actually add saturation and this is really gonna make our image look quote unquote normal. So let's just add 50 to go kind of hard right off the bat. And yeah, as you can see, a lot of colors back in this image here. It's looking a little green, we'll adjust that, but the skin has some color, and most importantly, that blood looks nice and red. So what we wanna do now is actually mess with the white balance. We've got temp and tint. Um, I wanna make this image less green, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some magenta. And just by adding 20 there, you can see this looks a lot more normal now, kind of daylight balanced. I'm gonna add 25, just to put it somewhere nice and even, or I guess 25 is not even, but you know what I mean. And now this image is still looking a bit blue. So I wanna take it away from that blue tint. I want it to have a bit more warmth. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase this. Let's see, 20, obviously that's way too much. Let's go back down to zero and just go slowly here. I think plus 10 does the trick. And now we're seeing that the skin has more appropriate color. The blood is still looking nice and red, the background. You know, these things are looking good now. Um, what I wanna do is add a bit more contrast because I can still see quite a bit of detail in the black shirt here. And this is personal taste, but uh, I'm gonna add in a bit here, just until that black kind of strengthens a bit. I think at 25 there, it's looking pretty good. And there, now there's more contrast in the skin and elsewhere. I really like where this image is. Um, I'm gonna show you a before and after here. So that's before and that's after. You can see big difference here. This is the lock scan, minimal contrast, minimal everything. And that is a full color grade. So this is very straightforward. It doesn't have to be very complicated. And this is all personal taste. You can add as much contrast as you'd like. You can, of course, balance the image however you like, and then the saturation as well. What I did here was very basic. There's so much other stuff you can do in terms of like fine-tuning the colors and the shadows versus the highlights, and you know, leaning your image in one way versus another. These are things you can mess around with, but it's completely up to you. Um, so we're gonna stop here, but this is looking good for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm telling you, I'm hooked, and I can't wait to keep shooting some more of this Vision 3 film. If you wanna order some, definitely use the affiliate link below in order to help support the channel. And that's it. Until the next video, y'all, I'm out.